Hi folks, I'm Ethan with Two Guys a Ride, and welcome to our how-to video on the 2019 Range Rover. So today we'll be taking a look at the infotainment screen. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Maury's Golden Valley Cadillac in beautiful Golden Valley, Minnesota. So this is the Touch Pro Duo system, of course, with navigation. So it's a 10 inch screen top and bottom, okay? So you can think of the top screen as your typical infotainment stuff. It's gonna have your media, your phone, your navigation, various apps, that kind of stuff, your backup camera. The bottom of the screen is climate, vehicle information, and then you, under vehicle information, you can also have um, some off-road information so the bottom shows the mode and the top screen switches and you get a couple of extra options for off-road uh, screens now the other thing that you can do is using this button in the middle you can actually have either have media or your phone show it up down here so up here you could have maybe say a full screen navigation All right, you just push there again to get back to it okay so, uh, this does have 13 speakers. It is the Meridian sound system. Uh, and Meridian makes a couple different sound systems for Range Rover. This is a smaller one. It's 380 watts, including a dual channel subwoofer. Now, Meridian sound systems include things like Trifield, where they blend the center and surround channels with the left and right channels to deliver more of a concert sound. They have a, tri a Trifield 3D, digital signal processing, Meridian cabin correction so that when it, the sound hits different surfaces, it acts differently, so you get the best sound possible. Uh, just a lot of work that goes into the Meridian system. It's just, it's the smaller of the system because it's 380 watts. And the other systems have uh, more than double that in wattage. All right, so this does have uh, AM and FM radio, Sirius XM. It has um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And it has a weather band in the radio. All right, so the, to start with, the top screen uh, tilts. So you can adjust that angle. So if I go here and I press on settings, now I can just tap that a couple times, you notice it changes. So you can get the best angle um, for your viewing. And then also you get a couple other things here, but we'll come back to that a little bit. I'm gonna press the X to get out of there. Okay, otherwise, uh, you, this is what you would consider your home page. It gives you navigation, media, and phone. There are a couple of shortcuts under these two, and then when I set up the phone, there'll be a couple of shortcuts under there. But you can also just tap on them, and they'll go to full screen. To get back to anything, you can just either hit home or the back button. Okay, if I swipe to the right, I get a screen where I can customize. So I'm gonna click here. And now I can decide uh, what I want to add. So if I click the first one, um, I want, let's say, I want a simple cancel guidance. That goes in uh, for navigation. Let's say I want um, auto reject for phone calls. That'll go in there. Um, let's come down here. Uh, sort of the same options here, but you notice you got a long list of options. So I'm going to hit 4x4 four four information. And then we'll come down here. We'll add one more. Let's go down here. Oh, let's go to Eco Data. Okay. Wait a minute. I saw one more that would be a good one to add. That was, let's see if I can find it again. Cameras. So now, I should be able to go back, and there's my screen. Now, it's kind of all over because I've set things all over, but you can adjust. You know, there are lots of little squares. You can line everything up if you want it, but there's that information right there. So if I tap on cameras, I instantly get the cameras. So you have one page that you can customize like that. All right. So, I'm a, and then if I scroll over here, you get just the, the, all the little apps that are in the car. All right? Cool that they give you, there are some things in there that are really kind of interesting. So that's the top of the main part of the screen. Down at the bottom, you have your shortcuts. 
Okay, so your shortcuts are your back button, your home button for the home screen, uh, settings, navigation, phone, media, Bluetooth, cameras, parking sensors, and then off-road. So um, let's just start by taking, we're on the home screen right now. So I'm going to tap navigation. All right, so the, the most commonly asked questions, of course, are how do you set a course? The easiest way is using voice command. I'll show you real quickly how to do a manual one. You just click on these six dots right here, click search, and type it in. Now, it says searching offline. It's still going to find it. If it's online, then you get more information. Like you get a phone number and maybe a menu and some different things. I click there, hit start. And now, not only does it run this screen, but because I had navigation running in the right side of my driver's uh, information screen, it's also showing up there. Now, so their question is how do you cancel a route? Easy. You just click on the same six dots. Click Stop Guidance, and there you go. All right, so let's go back to the home screen in a minute. That's navigation. Now, you can also, from the shortcuts, you can click the flag, and then you can have for home, favorites, recent, shared, community, uh, commutes, and custom searches if you have already programmed them in, or you can uh, go here to Search, and it brings up that search um, Key, uh, keyboard right away. And that's navigation. So if I go over to media here, you've got a couple of shortcuts. You can go right to favorites, hey, which there aren't any currently. Uh, if I go back here, uh, let's go to home, sorry. You can go to search. And now you can just scroll through the different cha available channels. Click on the one that you want. And if you want to make it a, uh, a, like a favorite, just click on the star. I hit the home button a minute. And then finally, if I hit this button right here, I get my sources. So if my phone was connected, uh, which I'll connect in a little bit, that would show up. USBs would show up, that kind of stuff. Um, all right, so let's go. So the most common questions asked about radios is like, well, how do you change stations? Okay, well, this is uh, fairly easy. You just click right here. Or you can use the steering wheel controls on the left, the double arrows, and you can change stations that way. Okay, you can also go to Find. And now you can scroll through the list. You can type in an actual station number, or you can look at genres. All right? You just click on one of them, and then it's going to think for a minute. It's going to bring up the different ones that are available, and you can click on those. So we'll hit the back button. Hit the back button again. Okay, and you can look at favorites that you already have. We, we start one, so we have one of them. Uh, and then you can look at the band and change between AM and FM. All right, now, um, sound. All right, so to get to audio settings, there's not a, a, any button I can find right on the screen that takes you right there. But if you click on settings and go to audio settings, now, this is where you can do your bass and treble. And of course, you can use a plus or a minus if you want. Uh, treble, subwoofer, and then because it's got the Meridian sound system, you can have either stereo, Meridian, Dolby Pro Logic, uh, or a DTS. So those are your options right there. Now, I don't see in here where typically you have like automatic volume level settings according to your speed, but maybe we'll see that in a different menu. All right. You notice this little screen right here. I'm, I'm going to go back here to get to the radio. This has three different options. So right now it's showing media, but I've got media right here. You could swipe up and you could show your phone or you could show navigation. So you can have, you can change that window a couple different ways. All right. So uh, let's go to home for a minute. That's media. Now we're going to connect to phone. So I'm going to say pair new device, then I'm just going to turn on my phone. And what I want to do is I want to go to my Bluetooth settings. I want to make sure that my Bluetooth is turned on. Scroll to the bottom of your Bluetooth connections. Wait for a second. 
and Range Rover should show up, which it did, so I'm going to click on it. it. says, is this the same number as on your phone? Yeah, it is. So I hit pair on my phone. I hit yes on the screen. It's going to pair it, and pretty soon we should be connected. There we go. So I can also disconnect if I want. Uh, now, um, I'm going to go back here to the home screen. Now, here's my phone. So I could go here and I could say search. Okay, and I can look at recents, contacts, keypad. I have an options button here where I can do voicemail, change phone, auto reject if I want, and someone calls me, and recent calls. Okay, I'm going to hit go back again. I can also just click on that and I get this, this same thing. So this shortcut does recents. And then this one right here, of course, brings you back to the like, which phone do you want list. And you could scroll through here and select whichever phone you wanted. All right. Now, um, go back home for a minute here. All right. So that's the three main icons here. If I scroll over, we get a couple of different things. Um, for instance, you have valet mode if you want to limit some features of the car, like stereo volume, that kind of stuff. You can do that through the valet mode. You're going to have to enter a code right away, which I'm not going to do, of course, but that's where you would do that. Uh, let's talk about the cameras. Wow. They are pretty neat on this vehicle. So you've got uh, cameras all around. So here's our 360 view right here. Now, some of them are covered. You see this dark spot because we have a covering over the windshield to prevent some glare from coming in. If I go to the cameras here, I can go to front view. That's a narrow view. This is a little wider view, kind of shows you the vehicle. And I can click this X and get rid of that. Now I've got a split screen, kind of shows you where the camera is. Okay. Uh, I can go down here and get a side view. And I can go down here and get a rear view that's kind of wide and a rear view that's a little more, angle, uh, a little more narrow. So lots of camera systems there. You can also turn the dynamic swivel guidelines on or off. And if I throw it in reverse for a minute, you'll see those. Okay. And then if I wanted the 360 at the same time, I could have that. So it just, that, that's a very nice system. I like it. I like the, that you can make the camera take up the whole screen. All right. I'm going to hit home for a minute. Go over one. Uh, so you have some in-control apps that you can download, but you got to connect a uh, compatible device to the USB port. Okay, so don't have that, but that's where that is if you want in-control apps. We'll get to Apple CarPlay uh, in a minute. Ecodata. So here, you've just got a simple click. You've got uh, miles, instant miles per gallon, miles per hour, a timer, and a distance that you've traveled. So this one is you, how hard you're pressing the accelerator. This would kind of be RPMs, and this one would be how you're braking. All right, um, let's go back here. And let's go, you have a web browser if you want to browse the web. Um, you can look at live information if you want updates and that kind of stuff. That's where that is. All right, if I swipe over, I got one more screen of apps so I can look at contacts. I can get 4x4 four four information here if I click on it, but I'm going to show you that in a different section. So I'm going to go back here. Um, voice command, if you want to go in here and you want to see, like, learn what it will do, you can go through a tutorial. You can see what commands it will do. And then you can also uh, use voice tags like phone and radio so that you can get more specific information uh, by using the voice command system. All right, I'm going to go back again here. Cool thing is you get vehicle dimensions. Okay, so right now it's in meters, so let's set it to feet. Now it'll make a little more sense. 16 feet, 5 inches long, uh, 7 feet, 3 inches wide, 5 feet, 11 tall. So if you're going through a car wash or something and you need to take a look at that, and that's according to the, uh, the access height that's currently selected because it does have air suspension on it. So the next couple of screens add some additional information. So here you got the 8-inch uh, clearance in the front. And then uh, at a normal ride height, you got 6 foot 1 inches of height. Okay? And then if I go again, then I'm, if I have off-road height, now I've got 11 inches of clearance here and 6.4 inches or 6.4 feet of um, height. 
All right, now I can also go down here and click on this icon and I get a few more things uh, down below. So for instance, I get nine, it tells me it's nine feet, seven inches from center to center on the wheels and then five feet, oops, five feet, six inches left to right from the center of one tire to the center of the other. Right? And that information is pretty much going to stay the same, but you notice it gives you the degree of approach and the degree of departure. They've added that information. I mean, that's really cool. Um, so this one is really kind of neat because it actually will calculate according to wherever you are when you're driving, right? which is, which is kind of cool. Okay, let's hit the back button. That's kind of the end of the stuff up here, but I want to go back and I want to, before I go on to the second screen, I want to show you Apple CarPlay. All right, so I'll, I'm going to hook to uh, Apple CarPlay. And to do that, I have to use a physical USB cable. Those connections are in the, under the center armrest. You just lift up the cover and there's two USB uh, A's that are there. All right, so now I'm connected. That means I can shut my phone off and now I have Apple CarPlay. Now, if you've never used Apple CarPlay before, I'd encourage you to sit down in your driveway with this video, take a little time with it. It's way, way better than Bluetooth as far as we're concerned. So here's how it works. It basically takes any app on your phone that will work with the car system and throws it up on the infotainment screen so you don't need to reach for your phone. It can sit there and charge the whole trip. All right, these are your most recently used things. Okay, and then you get uh, a, so kind of a window here where you get three things. You get navigation. Uh, this isn't popping up yet, but this will actually show you a map. This will be like a home uh, or a search button, um, depends on the car. And then over here, you've got uh, your media. If I swipe over, I'm going to start seeing all of the apps that I can use. Now, if you ever are in this and you want to go back to your Range Rover system, you can click the Land Rover button and it brings you right back. Want to go back there? You can just hit Apple CarPlay again. All right, so you'll notice things like I've got uh, Apple Music. I have got audiobooks. I have got Amazon Music, a Sirius XM on my phone, Pandora. Um, so then navigation, I got Waze. I have got Google Maps and I've got Apple Maps. So even if you didn't maybe like the, the vehicle's navigation system, you could always use um, one of those off your phone. And it's just, it's just really slick. Now, not only that, but the voice command, if you, uh, if you push and hold it, it will access Siri. And if you're on an Android, it'll access your Google Assistant. And then you can do things like this. Siri, open Pandora. And voila, there you are. So, I mean, that is, I think, so cool that they made Apple CarPlay and Android Auto um, voice controlled. I think that's just really, really neat. Okay, so that's Apple CarPlay. And of course, those arrows are at the bottom of the screen because you, know, you just have the extra apps there. This button here takes you from the app view to the split view. And now you'll see where it, what I was talking about. So here's the navigation picture. There's a go button. And this is also Siri, but you've got that right through your voice command button as well. Okay, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to press the Land Rover button to get back to the main system. All right. You notice that Apple CarPlay now shows up in my bottom icons. All right, so we have talked about... Um, the navigation, we've talked about Apple CarPlay, we've talked about media, we've done Bluetooth, we've looked at the cameras. This is simply parking sensors and you can turn them on or off. Okay, they take a little bit to react, so you kind of have to just wait for a little bit. But you know, in the event that you were towing a trailer or something or backing up and you didn't um, want those on, that's where you can turn those off. This little mountain icon brings you to an off-road page, which again, I'm gonna show you in a minute. So I'm gonna go back here. All right, hit the home button. So down here to the second screen, one of the nice things is I'm going to pull up navigation up here and I'm just going to hit this so we just get a picture and we'll go here, we'll hit start. Okay, I'm going to tap this button and I have media. So I can have a full screen navigation here and all my media right here. And this gives you all the shortcuts, favorites, sources, you know, scan forward, scan backwards. And then if you click on volume, you can mute it. 
Now you can do phone too. However, in Apple CarPlay, if you tap this, it actually changes this screen. Whereas if you are in Bluetooth, which I will switch to for a minute, now you see I've got basic things right here. All right, I got voicemail. Um, here I've got recents. I can go back here. So you can have your phone control there if you want. Now, anytime you want to see what's underneath this, you can always grab this double edged line here, this double line, and just scroll up. Okay, but it's nice that you can have that split screen like that. So they're showing two different things. Okay, so let's start with. Um, the, the, the things that we can do with this screen. So first of all, you got the two phone or um, media showing, okay? And if I go to um, settings, I can say I want the display on startup to show driver modes, climate, um, no feature to open media, last use, phone, seat. So you can program what it comes to when you start the car up, okay? So I'm gonna leave it there for a minute. And then under climate, if you click that, you actually have additional climate functions. So uh, auto defrost, on or off, the front and rear, um, auto blind, on or off, all this kind of stuff. Your other controls are down here, okay? So you've got AC, front and rear defrosters, you got volume and power down here, you got fan control down here. Now, if you notice, if I tap that, this turns into a fan, and now I can raise or lower the fan speed. Okay, the buttons themselves show temperature, but if you click on them on the rim, like where the silver part is, turns to your heated and cooled seats. So now you rotate it for three-stage heating, or you rotate the left for three-stage cooling. And that is available on both sides. Okay, you got uh, another button for max AC and max defrost. The other thing you do here is you can look at your seats right here, and if I turn this on, these are front seats right here. I can say I want you know the heated area to be in the back. I want the heated area to be the, the seating pad only, or I want that off altogether, which I don't know why you would do, but you can always turn on manually here. But let's say you only want the back, then you can set it there, okay? Now, over here, so you can do the same thing for the passenger. Okay, if I switch here, I can get rear seats. So for the rear seats, you have the same options. Okay, you just click on them and then you can rotate this dial and then it will go to heated or cooled. Okay, and then you can turn on, like I don't want the back to be cooled or I don't want the bottom seat to be cooled. And you can do that on both sides. All right, so that's the seat button. Climate button here, you get a few extra things like where the wind is gonna blow. Okay, you can hit the sync button, which is the only place that that sync button shows up. I wish they would have another button like down here that had the sync or right within the dials somewhere, but it, it's there. And then you have auto left and auto for the right side. Um, and then you can switch here from front to rear. So the rear can have an auto setting of their own and then the front two sections can have auto settings of their own. All right. Under vehicle, this is where I wanna show you the off-road stuff. So first of all, you have your drive modes. So if I go through here, it's kind of cool. It changes up on the driver screen for just a little bit. That's the dynamic mode. Of course, you've got eco mode, okay? And it's kind of cool because the pictures all change on the dashboard at least. And they don't stay there long. They're, they just kind of pop up for a little bit and then they disappear. All right, you have got, um, sorry, this one, this, this one here was uh, comfort. Then this one, this one here is grass, gravel, and snow. And this one here is mud and ruts. This one here is sand. And then this one here is rock crawl. Okay, and I have to be in low range to select that so it won't bump over. Now, if I hit the mountain button down here, which is the same as down here, I've got some off-road information. So if I go here, okay. So you're gonna have the wheel angle for steering. You're gonna have your gear selector. And then this diagram shows you how far up or down your wheels can travel. They don't give you actually any measurements, but it just kind of visually shows you, okay? So if I took the ride height and I raised it, 
that you can see it changing right here. So this kind of gives you a visual say, okay, I've got this much room between my wheel and the rims. So these icons here are just showing up because for instance, if I put uh, descent control on, that's now gonna light up. If I press it again, it's now gonna go off. So it's just indicative of what's, of what's uh, running. Down here, I can switch from this view to this one. I can tell what angle the car is sitting left to right and front to back. And then I can look at a compass, which that's kind of a cool graphic. And I can go to this one. And then it gives me a definition of what program I'm in. So if I switch, for instance, to Eco, it's going to change the, the definition. So if you want to see exactly what it's doing, you can look in there. So again, a couple more of uh, extra pieces of information there. Your auto start stop, you can defeat that right there, turn it off, or you can leave it on right there. All right, and then that's vehicle, and then settings we already looked at. So that is the infotainment system on the 2019 Range Rover. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.